Howdy, and welcome to a revisiting of Bevy's material system. Now that Bevy 0.8 has released, my old material videos are obsolete, and I'm excited to show off how much better the new design is. Bevy 0.8 is a massive update, and over the next few months I'll try to cover all the new features, but I figured this is a great place to start given how much effort I put into learning and teaching the old material system. To cut right to the chase, what used to take 20 minutes of tutorial and weeks of me studying the systems is now just a quick derive that does all of the magic of implementing render asset and material 2D for you. If you've been doubting Bevy's commitment to improving ergonomics with every version, I recommend looking back at the old version of this tutorial and admiring how much better things have gotten in just the past two months. So without further ado, let's create the same example that used to take three technically intense tutorials in a single video. First, let's get the basic setup for a Bevy project. I'm going to use my template, which for now just creates a default app and a camera. Then we want to create a system to spawn a mesh with our material. All we need are commands, the mesh assets to create the mesh, and the assets of our material. So let's create a strut to be our material. Now we just need to spawn a material mesh 2D bundle, and just like last time, the same things will work for 3D just without specifying 2D everywhere. We will set the mesh as a simple default quad, and then we'll create an instance of our material strut and add it to the material's asset. Finally, we'll leave to visibility as the default, and we have created a mesh with our material. Don't forget to add our system as a startup system to the app. But unfortunately, our strut is not yet a material. Here we used to need to manually implement material and render asset, but now all we need to do is first derive type UUID and generate a UUID, and this lets us use the material as an asset. Then, to use it as a material, we need to add the new derive as bind group, and we need to derive clone. After doing this, we can implement material 2D for our strut, and we see we no longer need to implement any functions for material 2D, because as bind group will handle all of the boilerplate we did last time of creating the bind group layouts and the actual bind groups. To actually do anything useful with this material, though, let's implement fragment shader, and we just return the name of our shader, which we'll create in our assets folder. The into call here handles turning our file name into the shader ref type for us. Finally, as one last step, we need to add the material 2D plugin for our new material, so Bevy will know to run the extract and prepare systems and then render meshes with our material. Now we can create the fragment shader file we specified, and just like last time, we can get the strut that the default vertex shader will pass into our fragment shader as input. Notice that we are now using the more modern WGSL syntax with at signs instead of double brackets, and this is more in line with the current WGSL manual because Bevy updated to the newest version of WGPU. Here in the shader, we can just return the UV coordinates as the output color, and when we run the game, we'll see our quad with our material running. This is effectively the end of my old first video on shaders, but without any of the confusing spider web of implementing multiple traits and figuring out how they tie into each other. But now it gets even better, because we need to get data into our shaders, which used to be the entire episode 2 of my tutorials. Back in main, we have our material strut which has nothing inside it, but let's say we want to pass a color into our shader. All we need to do is add the color to our strut, and use the attribute uniform0, and now the as bind group derive will magically handle creating the layout and bind group for us. In our spawn quad system, let's add a color to our material instance, and that's all we need to change in the rust code. Back in the shader, now we can create a strut for our uniform, where colors will become a vec4 of f32. And then we set up the binding for this strut as group1 binding 0. And now we can use this uniform data to color our material. The binding number here comes from the 0 we put in the uniform attribute, and everything created by as bind group will be group1, just like last time. Group0 and group2 are used by Bevy for mesh data, and you can dig into these to see what the default vertex shader makes available to you. Also in part 2 of my original series, we loaded a texture into our shader, so let's do that. All we need to do is add a handle to the texture and use an attribute for the texture bind location and an attribute for the sample or bind location. If you want to add more specific information about how to use the texture and how to set up the sampler, the attribute here supports many additional parameters that you can see in the docs for this system. Now in setup, we can use the asset server to load in the awesome face image and that's all we need to change. Back in the shader, we can now grab binding 1 and 2 as the texture 2D and sampler respectively, and sample the image to set our output color. This is now the final end result of my entire second video on the old material system, 
and it's important to note how much nonsense we no longer need to care about. We used to need to juggle keeping the layouts and buying groups in sync across two different traits, and we also needed to handle getting the material layout of our buffers right, and even create the buffers by hand. And we had to get the texture view and sampler out of the image loaded by Bevy. All of that now is just handled magically for us, and it's almost trivial to create simple materials. And I say simple materials, but this exact system is now how Bevy's physically based rendering standard material is implemented. So it's more than enough to create some beautiful looking materials, and you can focus your efforts more on creating great looking things, and less time getting into the weeds of how the graphics card data shoveling works. Now let's move into what was once the third part of my series, getting changing data into our shaders. We still need to interact with the extract and prepare stages of the rendering pipeline, but thankfully these are a lot more logical in the new update. Let's start with prepare. Remember that systems here are running in the rendering world and have access to a different rendering specific set of resources. Prepare is the stage where we can write to our buffers and set up things before the queue stage of rendering, where the actual draw commands will be set up. Let's create a simple health component and add it to our mesh when we spawn it. Now in prepare my material, we can query for the entities with our health and a handle to our material. Note that these haven't been copied to the render world yet, but we are just setting up the system. Now we can loop over the entities to get each health and handle using the new query into iter syntax. Now we need to actually get the reference to our data buffer, which is used internally to send data to the GPU. Thankfully, I found a new resource in the render app called Render Materials 2D. This is a map from our handles to the corresponding prepared Material 2D. This is added by the Material 2D plugin, and we can see that the prepared material strut contains a vector of owned binding resources and that these are references to the buffers, texture views, and samplers that is created by the material. So back in our system, we will get the prepared material, being careful that it might not exist for the first couple of frames as the assets load. Then, we check if each binding is the buffer binding for our uniform, and we can extract the buffer out of it. I haven't found a way yet to determine which buffer is which if we're using multiple, but I'm sure if a little digging we can find out the order these are added to the prepared material. Finally, let's use encase to create a new uniform buffer. And then to write into that buffer, let's create a new strut containing our uniform and derive shader type for it. Deriving shader type handles all of the STD140 memory layout nuance that we had to do last time, and the new encase backend is much more ergonomic for handling things like this. Now we just call buffer.write with the material data, which for now can just be the color with the health value as the red channel. It's hard to tell why this returns a result, so I'm just going to unwrap it here. Then we just use the render queue resource that we use to write buffers, and we'll pass it the buffer we got from the material, an offset of zero, and our newly created buffer as the data. Now we need to actually extract our entities into the render world. Let's create another system, but this time it will run in the extract stage. Remember, extract is where data moves from the main world into the render world, so anything that we use in the rendering sub app must be extracted from the main world. Here we just need commands and a query for the entities with a health and a handle to our material. One note is now we need to wrap the query in the extract type, and this explicitly tells Bevy that the query is querying the main world and is a major improvement to how confusing the extract stage used to be. Now it's very clear that everything not wrapped in extract is from the render world. Then we just loop over the query and use commands to spawn our entities in the render world, and copy the health and handle. So now back in main we can add our two new systems to the render app and make sure they run in the correct stages. And in our spawn quad system, I'll create a different quad that has a different health value, so we can see that we're creating two different material instances and copying their respective data. As one last thing, let's make the shader respond to time. First, let's add time to our main material and to our material uniform data. Then, we need to create a strut to hold the extracted time value, because time still only exists in the main world by default. Now, instead of creating a new extract system, we have a cool new concept called an extract resource. For simple things, you can just derive extract resource and Bevy will automatically extract the resource into the render world after you add the extract resource plugins for that type. But because we only want the seconds and startup of time, we'll implement it ourselves. All we need is the source type, which is the resource in the main world that we want to use. And then we implement the extract resource function that uses the source to create the extracted version. So for us, we just create an extracted time using time.seconds and startup. Now we add the extract resource plugin for extracted time, and then we can use it in our prepare system. In the prepare system, we just use the extracted time like any other resource, and we add it to our uniform data. 
Now in the shader, we change the strut to include time and we can use it like any other uniform data. This is now exactly the same demo that we created over half an hour of in-depth tutorials in Bevy 0.7. It really is magical how much these systems have improved this version, and I expect to see many more small Bevy games taking advantage of these new systems. There are tons of other great features in Bevy 0.8, and I highly recommend giving it a chance if you've been hesitant before. As always, thank you so much to my Patreons, and expect a lot of new exciting Bevy content coming soon. Please remember to like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.